As the owner of a 10 year old super flat survival world, one of the most common questions I get is how to stick with your single player world. Here are 10 tips on how to stay motivated and stop quitting your world. Number one, document everything. Whenever I get this question and reflect on the last 10 years in my world, the number one thing that comes to mind as to why I've kept going is that I document everything. Documenting your world not only helps you keep track of all the progress that you make, but it also makes it easier to share your world with other people. Now, of course, the main way I've documented my world is through YouTube videos videos, which is extra motivating because I get to read all your wonderful comments and ideas. I also get to hear how my voice has changed and listen to funny things I talked about when I was 16, like learning how to drive. Release your clutch slowly. Uh, you want to shift to first gear and at the same time apply gas. But another thing you can do is simply take a lot of screenshots. I see people post photo albums on Reddit or Instagram all the time and it's another awesome way to get feedback and share your progress with the World Wide Web. But Mojang has provided us with another awesome way to track your progress built into the game, maps. I definitely recommend making yourself a map wall. You can even lock maps using a cartography table and a glass pane in order to freeze them in time and get an idea of how much progress you're making. It's also fun to keep a current map and update every time you build something new. Recently, we built a giant spider temple at the center of our world, so let's see how it looks. Dude, holy crap, that is so much cooler than I was expecting. You can like tell it's a spider. Wow, that, that looks so cool. One thing a lot of people do in regular worlds is boot up a new world with the same seed to see how things have changed. That's actually one of my favorite parts about playing Super Flat. You basically always know what your seed originally looked like at the start, so it's very easy to contextualize all the progress you've made. Think of it almost like sandbox mode from Roller Coaster Tycoon. And last but not least, you can always load up a world backup to see how things have changed. Here's a backup of my world from May 2020. Wow, this world looks so different. Speaking of backups, here's tip number two. Make frequent backups. I guarantee you that nothing will make you want to quit more than losing a bunch of progress. I've seen it happen in my Discord. Whether it's due to world corruption or setting up a complex redstone system and accidentally blowing it up, loading up a backup will keep you from quitting your world when you get really upset. Are you kidding me, dude? It happens to everyone. But of course, uh, some uh, people uh. might think it's cheating to load up a backup if something bad happens in your world. Which brings me to my next tip. Number three, play how you want. The beauty of Minecraft is that it's a game that lets you play however you want. Texture packs, data packs, mods, vanilla tweaks, you name it. Anything is fair game as long as you're having fun. Don't get me wrong, many people will try to gatekeep, but don't let them ruin your fun. In my personal world, I turned off fire spread and enderman griefing. A lightning strike did a ton of damage to my base years ago, and I just decided it would be more fun not to worry every time it starts to thunder in the game. When I started doing all these huge terraform mountains, endermen were griefing the crap out of them, so I just decided to put an end to that as well. Now, it may not be purely vanilla, but at the end of the day, it keeps me from raging and quitting this beautiful world. If you thought these tips were we're good, just wait for the last few. I know you'll be sticking with your world if you watch to the end of the video. Number four, make to-do lists. One of the best ways to ensure longevity in your world is by staying organized. Google Docs can be great because if you're out in the world riding the bus or something, you can write down a to-do on your phone. But it's also fun to use signs in the game. Instead of checking things off or crossing them out, I use green dye to mark them complete. We just did a live stream where we finished several small tasks and we can actually check off this major goal as well since we've built our big temple. Oh, dude, that feels so good. It never gets old. That was one of the tasks on our 10 year plan for my 20 years in Minecraft Super Flat video. In that video, we discussed how I'm gonna keep busy for the next 10 years in order to make it to 20 years in this single player world, which is something I really wanna do. Imagine 20 years in one world. That would probably be older than most of you are now. Some of the goals on this list are absolutely huge, but that's on purpose, which brings me to tip number five. Make a goal so big, you don't know if you can finish. When you're starting out in a new world, you might not have a clear vision of what you wanna do. For example, when I started with this tower, I knew I wanted to do a lot of terraforming, but the final idea for the base didn't really come to me until much later. In my experience, eventually there's gonna be a moment where you see all the things in your world and start to get some pretty big ideas. The moment this happened to me was back in 2020. My world sort of had things going on in each direction from my main base, but they all felt very disconnected from one another. And eventually I began to wonder if I could potentially tie them all all together somehow into one massive cohesive gigabase. What could the lore be that connects these areas? What are the goals of the average citizen of this realm? Suddenly I was flooded with ideas. Actually, this is sort of an optional bonus tip. Add a 
adding lore to your world can be an incredible way to stay inspired. For example, I wanted to cover up this old spider farm and I came up with a spider cathedral where the villagers worship spiders, and eventually that led me to building the literal centerpiece of my world. The goals I have are so big, who knows if I can ever finish this world. All I know is that the vision I have of my end goal is so inspiring to me that it gets me excited to log into Minecraft and chip away at it every single day. But I'll be honest, there have been times in the past where I simply didn't want to play, and that's okay. Number six, expect lulls. Sometimes a new game comes out that grabs your attention. Maybe you're in school and you get busy with exams. Maybe suddenly you find your social life bust. That's never happened to me, but I imagine it would pull you away from the game a little bit. Give yourself some breaks if you want to have a long-term world. I guarantee you, if you followed the other tips on this list, the urge to play will come back to you. Just look at this chart of my Flat World episode releases. I went to college in fall 2014 and ended up barely playing for five years. Sure, I played off camera quite a bit, but nothing compared to when I started the world. But that was just where I was at in my life, and that's totally okay. Nowadays, I play more than ever before, and I'm so grateful that during that slow period in my world, I gave myself time to focus on real life and becoming an adult. And I think I'm pretty good at it, except for those taxes things everyone's always talking about. What are those? Was I supposed to do something? Hopefully you've enjoyed the tip so far. I've saved some of the best for last. Number seven, try a challenge. Maybe the reason that you keep quitting your world is that the vanilla survival Minecraft experience just isn't quite right for you. It wasn't for me. I too swapped worlds very frequently until I tried Super Flat Survival 10 Aww. years ago. Something about the challenge just hooked me. The Super Flat game mode also offers other presets that force you to play the game in different ways. Check out this seven year old desert Super Flat world by user AstroGeo6 on Reddit. Just think about all of the incredible bases you've seen in this game. Isn't it a little weird that a lot of them are in Hardcore, or on 2B2T, or in Skyblock, or in Superflat? <laughs> well, maybe it's not weird at all, actually. Maybe it's that the added challenge helps you keep going. Even if you're already pretty far into a world, try adding a challenge on top. No Elytra for a week. Or maybe a challenge for you is just doing something you don't usually do. If you're a building guy, go build a redstone project without a tutorial. Take it from me, challenges really help keep things fresh. Number eight, collaborate. Just because you're playing in a single player world doesn't mean your world has to be exclusively yours. I encourage you to share your world download and work on projects with other people. My good friend Redstone CPU helps me with technical farms all the time, and sometimes she even takes my world download and adds things into it in creative mode for me to reference. Not only that, but half the ideas for things in my world come straight from the comment section, and many of my buildings take huge inspiration from people I follow on Instagram. Try making friends that also play single player. Swap ideas or maybe even world files and see what happens. Collaboration is a great way to keep things fresh. But if you do want to stick with multiplayer instead, check out Apex Hosting. I use them for my public server, they're super easy to use, really reliable. There's an affiliate link in my description, check them out. Number nine. Perfect your end chest. This one may seem obvious, but I have to mention it because it made such a huge difference in my world. Recently, I started live streaming my super flat world every Wednesday, and one of the things you guys noticed right away was that my end chest is really organized. When I want to work on a project, I can basically always craft what I need to with the items contained in there. If I die unexpectedly, there's always an end chest nearby with backup gear. It's just a small thing, but it makes a world of difference in making you both more productive and less frustrated. It's actually crazy how much time you waste running back and forth when you forget resources for a project. I even color code my shulker boxes to keep everything straight. But it's time for my last tip of the day, the most shocking and unintuitive tip of all. Number 10, play other video games. If you're as crazy as I am about Minecraft, that might even be a challenge for you. But chances are, you're gonna be wanting to play other games anyways. And I encourage you to do so. Minecraft is a game that really yes. rewards you in the yes. long haul. So not burning out is critical to reaching your goals. If Minecraft is your go-to way to unwind after a long day, but it starts feeling like a chore, it's probably time for a little gaming vacation. But while you're playing other stuff, take notes. The endless terrain in Breath of the Wild was an enormous inspiration in my world. Playing Stardew Valley made me more interested in how I can inject lore and storylines into my world. And Animal Crossing made me totally rethink how I can go about interior decorating and give my builds more personality. And Among Us made me sus. I really hope these tips helped you, and to any single player veterans out there, please let us know in the comments if you've got any tips of your own. Thanks for watching. Yeah.